Hi, I'm Joshua Lou Friedman. I'm the first AD on the set. All right, guys, wardrobe is clear. Makeup is clear. Move table for a sec. Quiet, please. Lock it up. All right. All right. Pictures up. Two seconds. Oh God. Tell me when I can go. May I? Pictures up. Lock it up. Let's roll sound. Roll camera. <laughs> Seventy-one, take three. Mark. Great. And tell me when you're set. Okay. Well, it was an eight o'clock call. I got here around seven thirty. Okay. Sometimes, if it's a new location, I'll get there an hour earlier. But if it's a location I've already been living in, I'll be here at like seven thirty. Okay. As an example. And what's your typical hour spent on set? Twelve-hour days, um, not counting lunch. But then, you know, uh, with the before, you know, the travel time. I live far. I live like an hour away. So uh, that's that kind of sucks. T typically, it's a twelve-hour. Uh, day, but then with lunch, it's a 13 hour day, sometimes 14 hour day. So it depends if we go over. When we get here, I try to get all the actors, uh, you know, at first they do a blocking rehearsal for the director of photography and our director and all the department heads to see so we know what we're lighting and what we're shooting. And we work out as many bugs as we can. And I put the actors through the works, uh, the oh, yeah. makeup and hair and wardrobe while we're oh, yeah. lighting the set. And then when they come, when they're ready, the set is hopefully ready by then. And we do a camera rehearsal and then we shoot. And uh, we knock out all the scenes on the day as scheduled in prep. It's the most stressful job on set as it is because all the department heads are kind of bottlenecking through me. So, um, and when we go over, then I have to make, or if something's taking too long, I have to get the director to hopefully make concessions on how many shots he actually, you know. The, I, it's my job to adapt to the director and to make sure that he gets what he wants. Sometimes I make sure he gets what he needs rather than what he wants instead. Uh, it depends on if we are running behind or not. And usually I can make that work. We're going to flip that bare line when they're walking away where he's like, move your ass and pushes him into the room for that way. Over from them to these guys, okay? Uh, during that whole exchange. Then we're going to get a shot of them from here while he's walking, walking through. I'm gonna get him. Insert shot that has to match for a transition of um, Kevin's arm going onto this door, and then after that, um, I'm just going to let Defaz do the Defaz special. Five shots and then we're out. Okay. Are you one of those that thrives on stress? People that are meant for that. Yeah, um, I, I I get that. Yes, that that is true. Um, it's starting to take its toll, but I'm not going to lie to you. I'm an old man. I'm an old old man. Can I have Zach Ward on set immediately, please? I'm always the guy. Like every time I have jobs booked, they they never seem to be a couple days after I wrap or a week after I wrap. It's always. Oh, you're done shooting on the 16th? Perfect, you're starting with us on the 17th. And that's been the story of my life for years. Um, so very rarely do I get time off. Time off is one of those things that happen to other people. Well, it sounds like though you love to be on set. I do, I do. I do, I do, do thrive on the stress, that's the, I, admittedly. And, um, but yeah, it takes its toll. <laughs> um, very mellow when I'm not on set. Uh, but definitely, you gotta keep things moving. You know, uh, my pace dictates you know, the, the crew, the departments, and the, how fast the crew works, so you got to keep that energy going. Lock it up. Pictures up. 71's on the slate. 71 straight up. Here we go, everyone to one. Quiet everywhere. If you're just joining us, now's a lovely time to set your cell phones on stun. Light. Go ahead. Sorry, real quick. Um, the department has want to know if we're doing a pre-light for any of the scenes. Mm, not for, it's just a hospital room in here. So. Okay, cool. So we're pretty much good. Yeah, well, this will be changed because this is the old look. This is a vintage look. So we're going into modern look. And I'm not even sure if it's still this room. It might be the room across the way. Cool. Going to clear with James? Or? Double, double check with him. See which one he wants to use. Thank you very much. Sorry. No worries. Uh, oh, sh indoors and shooting outdoors. Obviously, indoors is more controllable, especially if you're on a soundstage, then you control so much more. Uh, outside, you're at the mercy of the elements, the uh, the weather. You have to power the lights if you're using lights. Uh, noise factors also play into it. Uh, airplanes and helicopters, which 
we tend to get a lot of here in LA. <laughs> a lot of here in LA. And yeah, so it's easier to shoot indoors. How long have you been doing this? Oh God, since 1991. Not just AD, just in the industry since 91. So a long time, a very long time. How have you seen it change, especially now with DSLR? Oh yeah, dramatically, actually. Um, I, I just saw the change when I, I did the third film ever to shoot on a red. And it was like, oh, this magic and this will change things. And lot, at first there was a lot of directors that were like, oh, no, I'll always shoot on film. And now most of them have come around to say, I'll never shoot on film again. So some, some will hold on to that. The purists will hold on to that. But, uh, you know, it's what, the way of the future, you know? And yes, everything's changed dramatically. Some things are easier and um, some things are actually more difficult in, in the back end. Like, you know, with the advent of HD, it really, like, I feel bad for makeup artists because in HD, it really separates the pros from the amateurs because you see, you catch so much more definition and detail. I want to say I felt it most around 2007, 2008, where it really was just, everyone was going digital. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, pictures up, last looks. Last looks. During prep, I'm responsible for putting the schedule together. Um, it's, it's very, it's a time-honored art to prep a film and to schedule it accordingly. And so that's basically your baby in a way, is this, the schedule. You know, you, I haven't written the script, that's the director or the writer's baby, or the director's, uh, the way he shoots it, that's his baby. And the writer, how he writes it, that's his baby. I schedule it, that's my baby. So it's kind of like seeing that baby come to fruition is uh, making a schedule that works, that, that we're making, that we stay on schedule. And I, that part I do thrive, thrive on. Movie Magic is what I use. It's kind of an industry standard. So there's a shooting schedule that I put together. There's all your cast members. And this is it. I have to, you know, put, group all the locations within a day and see what works with location stipulations, actors uh, stipulations. Here are all the different scenes. And here's every day of the shoot. And all this has to be ironed out during the prep. And I put all this together. And then on top of that, each one of these scenes needs to be broken down, don't they? for all the elements. So I have what's also called the breakdown. And I do these uh, every scene, as you can see, you know, as I'm as broken down to who's in it, what props are needed, what vehicles are needed, makeup, uh, notes, stunts, wardrobe notes. Um, yeah, so every scene has to be broken down like that. And then of course, the you've seen the schedule. And, put in an order that makes sense for the production. And I always turn in a breakdown in both uh, schedule order and scene order, so it's easier for the department heads to kind of bounce around and see what they need. By lunchtime, we have, a, they drop what's called a preliminary and I make sure all the department heads take a look at it so they can uh, throw in there a few cents. And I go over it with the director and my second AD every lunch who actually, you know, who, I, who, who puts it together and I approve it and make the changes. And we like to have it out by the end of the day, if, you know, because things change, like, what if a scene has to push uh, from today to tomorrow? If that is the case, then you know and it needs to be on the call sheet that's handed out or emailed at the end of the night. So usually end of the day, and if nothing's changed dramatically uh, since the lunchtime meeting, then we'll hand out a call sheet at the end of the day. They definitely get it in an email form as well. So yeah, end of the day. I love when I'm done with prep because I'm more of a, I mean, I got the paperwork down to a science, but at the same time, I prefer to be on set. I'm not a paperwork guy. I gotta keep the keep the earth moving. Let's go again. Going again right away. Go again. Right away. Reset, please. Everyone to one. Yes. Yeah. Looks. Last looks flying. I love it when things are cut out. I'm like, oh really? And I get that all the time. The director's like, oh, I just don't like the scene. We're gonna have to cut this scene or that scene. I'm like, I'm so sorry to hear that. No, I'm not. It's great. Because that means I have more time to get other things and make my day. Listen up. Uh, great job. By the way, coming in on Easter and working and uh, knocking out our day this early. Uh, we were thinking about stealing a scene, we're not going to. So, we are going to wrap early, under the auspices that everyone understands that our last day, day after tomorrow, we will most likely go over, okay? It's a load-in, uh, load-out. Load-in, load-out, and a and company move. And that's also the day that this scene that we were going to pick up is, is on. Mm -hmm. So we were going to pick it up to make it lighter, but we figured you guys would rather have Easter and the couple hours early done. Now, now that being said, on that last day, we will have a proper second meal available for everybody when that time comes, okay? Now, so, yeah. we, we, have a, we have a question because 
if it is not okay with anybody that we are doing that, we can still, we still have time to pick that up today. I need to make sure everybody is actually okay with this. And if they are not, we will push for it today. Today, yeah. But if everybody's okay with it, you all can go home right now. And feel free to step forward. I mean, don't, no. It, it's, it's, either way, we're gonna get the scene. So it's not a, it's not a, you do not have to feel bad if you have a problem with it. Yes, certain, certain scenes like to turn into what I call time vampires. And I'm a huge, uh, uh, fan of, uh, you know, that's when I start to get a little m meaner on set. I was like, hey, do you have to walk a fine line between, you know, being stern and yet keeping a jovial attitude, you know, keeping morale high. And I do walk that fine line, but if a scene is taking too long, um, that changes or I have to really start cracking the whip and uh, putting my foot down. So, yeah. So it's almost like you're playing good cop and bad cop within the same At person. the same time, yeah. It's very schizophrenic. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Anyway, so, you know. Who said that? Yeah. Who said that? <laughs> hey, Mark it? Yeah. Just wait for Hold on. And, hold on, quiet. And, action. What did you do? What did you do? Enough! It doesn't happen often, but there are curveballs that you never see coming. Uh, you can't prep for. You can't plan for. And it's... It's the experience of an AD, an experienced AD, to be able to uh, rise to those challenges that come, the ones you don't see coming, and to be a problem solver and find ways to fix it based on my experience. So, uh, yeah, those are the ones that, and you never know, you know, you never see them coming. You can't predict them. Without naming names or titles, it was an airplane set, and it was day one, our first day of shooting, and we were going to shoot in a cockpit. And uh, our department promised this cockpit they were building was going to be great, and they sent uh, pictures of the plans to the director and promised it would look good and it'd work and things weren't you know, I had heard like we're two days of shooting and the build wasn't they weren't sending pictures and whatnot so we, we weren't going to see anything till that day they're going to build all night and it was going to look beautiful and you know the producers were like we're taking a chance on that we showed up that morning the thing was barely built and we waited and we waited and we waited and when they finally built this cockpit you know, here we are we've called lunch and we haven't shot anything yet and then after lunch, by the time they finished the cockpit, the director looked at it and said, we're not shooting this, it looks like crap. So I'm like, what are we, we had to rent a cockpit from a rental house, had it, truck, had it on a truck, brought it over to the soundstage. It was big pain in the ass getting that cockpit, pre-built cockpit off the truck and into the soundstage. Then we had to dress it and rig it and light it. And I finally got my shot right before I called rap. That was an AD's nightmare, that whole, to have this whole day scheduled. So day, thankfully on day two, I did evolve, to, I made sure I brought in day one and day two at the same time and put us back on schedule on the same day. So that was, that was probably one of the most challenging things that never, never in my career have I uh, not gotten a shot before lunch, let alone uh, at the end of the day. That's just preposterous. And to have a whole set thrown out and another one brought in, it was just mind boggling. So yeah, crazy. Tuesday it is. Everybody bring rain gear. Rain gear for your, yeah, for your equipment and what have you. All right, guys, great thing work today, seriously. Guys, stick a fork in it. That's a wrap. Happy Easter. Very nice. That's a wrap.